Hey, what's up, y'all? It's Josh here, back with another episode of Keep It Techie, where we break down Linux tech and tools to help you get into the field or level up your workflow. In today's video, I'm showing you how to install and set up Gemini CLI on Ubuntu 24.04. And it's basically a command line AI assistant from Google that connects directly to your terminal and understands your code, your system, and even your goals. And what I'll do is go step-by-step step through the install, cover two authentication methods, and finish with a quick demo generating a basic app from scratch. And I'll also share some thoughts at the end about AI privacy, because I'm really not keen on having this type of software installed on your system, especially when tools like this are pulling data from your local machine. But before we get started, like this video and subscribe if you're new here and let's jump into it. Now, before we get started, I wanted to quickly show you guys the GitHub page. This is where you can get Gemini CLI. As you can see, it says an open source AI agent that brings the power of Gemini directly into your terminal. You can check it out for yourself. It has a Apache 2.0 license. You can look at all the contributions. You can contribute to it. It's written mainly in TypeScript or JavaScript. You need Node.js in order to use it. And I'll walk you guys through how to get that installed as well on Ubuntu, because I'm gonna look at it like you may be new to using Linux and you may wanna try this out on your Linux system and you need Node.js installed in order to get this thing installed on your system. But they do have a lot of good information here. So authentication guide, so you can click here, that'll show you how to get your API keys. And also you can generate your key from the Google AI Studio. If you need to, you can also use your personal Google account if you want to. And this will grant you up to 60 model requests per minute and a thousand model requests per day using Gemini. So that's uh, pretty good, you know, for just your personal Google account. And then also you got some examples down here, you can check it out, but they also have a lot of documentation. So let me click on that, but you could definitely check out all their documentation. And this is one of the things I was interested in, the telemetry data. If you click there, that will, you know, show you some of the telemetry information. You can turn certain things off. They do have some tools, web fetch tools. You can fetch things from the internet. So, and I'll show you guys a little bit of that once we get into it, but let's go on and get to the install. You know, there is the installation on the main page. It kind of walks you through how to install it right there. Super simple. Like I said, you need Node.js, but let's switch over to my system so we can get the install going. What's up, y'all? If you've been watching my channel for a minute, you already know I stay talking about Linux. And if you're looking for a solid, reliable enterprise Linux distro, let me put you on to Rocky Linux. This is the go-to replacement for CentOS, and it's built for the community by the community. It's got everything you need for a stable and secure Linux experience, whether you're running servers, home labs, or enterprise workloads. And the best part is backed by CIQ, making sure it stays rock solid for the long haul. So if you're tired of these companies pulling a plug on your favorite distros, Rocky Linux is where you need to be. And I've covered Rocky Linux before, and trust me, it's worth checking out. So head over to rockylinux.org to learn more and get started. Keep it techie. Peace. Okay, so I'm logged into my virtual machine this is Ubuntu 24.04. And the first thing we need to do is install Node.js, like I said a little earlier. So I'll go down and zoom into our terminal and let's check what version of Node is in Ubuntu 24.04. And one thing you could do is you could type, let's go sudo app. So you could type info and then let's just type Node.js just to see what version is in there. And let's just run typing our sudo password. And let's scroll up and see what version we got. Yeah, so the version that comes in Node.js is 20.16. So that's good enough. That's what Gemini CLI needs. It needs 18 plus. So anything above 18 is good. So we could just use what's in the Ubuntu repository. So let's go down and install that. So let's go sudo apps install. And I could have left uh, that Node.js on there. But let's go down and type that in and install it right fast. So it'll run through and get everything installed for us. And while we wait for that to finish, let me go down and switch back over to the website right fast and show you guys a few things. Now, there's two ways to install it, and it's very straightforward. There's the quick one time run, which is here, the MPX, and then this will run it one time. 
but let's say you want to constantly run it on your system or you want to get it installed globally on your system then you want to run this npm command and this will install gemini on your system globally and you can use it from here on out on your system which i'm going to install it globally and so let's go down and grab this command because this is what we're going to install and switch back over to our terminal because it looks like it just finished over here with installing Node.js. So let's go down and paste that in there and get Gemini CLI installed. And it looks like we need NPM installed too. So let's run that as well. So sudo apt install and then NPM. I thought Node.js was going to install that as well. So we'll get that installed too. That'll get everything else installed as well. So Let's wait for that to finish. It shouldn't take too long for that. All right, so we got npm install. Let's go down and try our command again. Press enter, and this should get uh, Gemini CLI installed. So I'll wait till this finishes, and I'll be back. Then we'll run the command. I'll show you guys how to run a command, and we can start up Gemini. All right, so it fell right away, and I already know what the issue is. We have to run it as sudo, but you'll see uh permissions denied because it's trying to create directories under user local lib here user share node.js uh yeah it's trying to create these directories yeah it doesn't have permissions to create these directories so essentially it's because it doesn't have permission so we're gonna have to run this thing as sudo and we do have a few warnings here uh i'm not sure why I mean, we do have a higher version than what it recommended, which was 18. So 18 plus. I'm not sure why the warning is different. So it looks like everything completed successfully. So we should be good to go. And so after that, all you have to do is run Gemini. So G E M I N I and press it. And this will start up Gemini for us. There we go. And so one of the first things it's going to do is ask you to select a theme so you can go through i'm gonna just use the default you can move it around uh there's the dracula theme the github theme i'm gonna just use the default let's just roll with that boom and then now you have to select your authentication method and this is what i was talking about it's gonna ask you to log in and you have three different ways to log in I'm not sure about this Vertex AI. I didn't look into that one, but I have looked into the Gemini API. You got to have the AI API or the AI Studio API key, and you can add that to your Bash or C. Once you get that API key, or you can just log in using your Google account. I'm going to go down and do that. And what it's going to do is open up your browser. It's going to ask you to log into your Google account, and I'll skip past that port so you guys don't see my account, but it's going to open up the browser and I'll kind of skip that port or at least show you the login page and then we'll skip that part so yeah like i said it'll open up google for you to sign into it and so i'll sign in right fast and then it will close this browser and then your command line will be logged in so i'll be back in a sec all right so we are logged in now good to go so i went on and closed it out because i wanted to go down and create a quick project just showing you guys gemini in action and I'll get it to generate a starter app for me. So let me go down and create a quick directory. So let's go make a DIR and let's create something like, I don't know, we'll just put my app and we'll make that in my home directory. And let's just CD to that directory, boom. And then let's run Gemini and press enter. And it will open it up in that directory. And as you can see, we're in that location right there. So, and first off, let me show you guys how to uh, get help. And you guys can see that right there. There is a help. You can press the four slash and this will open up the help or you can type out help and that'll bring up the help. And you can look through and check out all the options that are there for you. You can look at the documentation. This will open up the full Gemini command line documentation in the browser. You can clear the screen, the conversation history, change the theme, change your authentication method, set up the editor, external editor, privacy stats, MCP. So if you got an MCP server, tools, memory, about, bugs, chat, quit, compress. You can compress the context by replacing it with a summary. So that'll compress any information that you've already put in there. But anyway, let's go on and create our little simple application. So. What I'm gonna do is just type something simple in here. Let's say we wanna create, let's go create a basic flask. I created something with flask before and all flask is, is a Python front end application. And let's just put something, I don't know, simple. Let's see that displays, I don't know. Hello, keep it techie. 
and then found and then we got and actually let's put a, a estimation point in here and press boom so let's see what happens contemplating the application and so there we go so right file and yes we want to allow it so it apply change and you can specify what you want it to do you can say yes allow once yes allow always you can modify it with external editor no but we're going to say yes and that way it'll create those files within that directory and the app will be available at 127.0 so home at five, port 5000 and i'm not gonna open it up but we can look at the actual code there you'll see that it wrote it out and that's the flash application right there app.py and i know that's the right way of writing it that's the root of the actual flash application so i'm not gonna run the file because i'm gonna have to create a virtual environment install flash and then run a development environment run the python you know with app and it'll you know allow it to be shown at the address but essentially it's going to say that on the website but that's just a simple example of gemini spitting out the python code and setting up a file structure and even giving me you know some of the next steps to run you know the application and you can also tweak your prompts uh exit to edit files and even summarize uh code changes across commits i mean it's basically your ai somewhat teammate in the shell which i thought was super cool and that's why i wanted to show it to you guys uh especially for people that are using linux all right so let me talk about something that ties to applications like this and that's privacy and ai see tools like gemini cli are incredibly powerful they help you automate workflows explore code bases and speed up development but they're not running in a vacuum a lot of that magic is happening in the cloud on google servers and it's not just google it's all of these cloud platforms it's running on their servers this means when you paste in a block of code or exit to audit your repo or even feed in full markdown files, you're technically sending that data up to one of these models that are in the cloud. Now, whether that's a concern depends on what you're working on. For personal stuff, open source side projects, it might be no big deal. But if you're in a corporate setting or dealing with sensitive information, you really have to stop and ask, should this leave my machine? And that's where local models and self-hosted tools come into play. So Olama, LM Studios, private GPT setups, they're all options when you want control without sacrificing functionality. And I'm not saying don't use Gemini, I'm using it right now, but it's good to be aware and make sure you use the right tools for the right job and keep your data sovereignty in mind as you build cool stuff. So in a nutshell, that's how you can get Gemini CLI up and running on Ubuntu 24.04, complete with a working demo and some food for thought about privacy in this AI age. And if this helps you out, Go down and hit that like button, subscribe to the Keep It Techie channel, and drop comments down below if you have any questions or want to see more tools like this in the future. I'll make sure I leave all the links down below, the GitHub repo, the Gemini docs, and AI Studio in the description below. I appreciate all you guys watching, and as always, stay focused, stay learning, and of course, keep it techie. Peace. Yo, what's up, y'all? Listen, if you've been sitting there thinking about making a move, let me tell you, tech is where it's at. I don't care where you're coming from, whether you've got a degree, a GED, or just pure hustle. There's room for you in this game. You see, tech is more than just keyboards and code. It's solving problems, creating opportunities, and building the future. You already have what it takes because tech doesn't care where you start. It cares where you're willing to go. You can teach yourself Linux, learn Python, break into cybersecurity, or even launch your own app. And the resources are out here for free. And yes, you heard me, free. Now, yeah, it's going to take effort. You'll have to grind. But think about this. The time is going to pass anyway. So why not invest it in a skill that'll change your life? I mean, tech doesn't just pay the bills. It opens doors to freedom, stability, and generational wealth. So stop doubting yourself, store small, stay consistent, and keep building. Because this isn't just a career. It's a movement. And guess what? You belong here. So let's get it. Because the future is yours to build. Keep it tech.
Wow. <laughs>